guys welcome to big sister i hope you guys are having a wonderful day i am still getting over my cold that i've had uh just kind of got to me i think just a few days ago um yesterday i think or the day before that i had a fever it's crazy um just a slight one but still enough it was like 100.5 so i had to just really juice it and um, rest um, it's just amazing how you can just feel so just a slight cold can make you feel so bad and let me tell you how I knew that I wasn't feeling well because I'm a person like when I go to the car because it's very hot here <laughs> and when I go to the car like I go outside I'm like oh it's so hot ah, you know I get in the car I'm like oh get the air on ah. So, and normally what I do, I ought to start the car so that the AC is already running, but I didn't do that. So, it hoots. I was like laying down and everything, and I was resting, but then I had to get up. And I'm like, man. So, I go outside, right? The house is already like all AC'd up. But when I went outside, the heat felt so good to me, which is crazy. Because I know that's not me. But for some reason, I could just feel my body just soaking up the heat. Like, it felt so good to me for some reason. And it was hot outside. Normally, I go outside, and I'm like, oh. I went out there, and my body just was like, oh, this is amazing. And when I got inside the car, I didn't auto start it. So it was just like, the car was hot. But for some reason, my body was loving it. I literally sat in a hot car like for like two minutes, just enjoying it. And I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not feeling well. So, any hoots. Um, guys, I want to talk with you all about, um, you know, toxic family members and how to deal with that. It is a very, very difficult thing when you have family members who are toxic. A toxic family member is not a person that, who disagrees with you. You know, you can have disagreement. They may, you may have different points of views on things. That doesn't make them toxic. It doesn't make them toxic when they tell you the truth about things that you need to hear about. And sometimes even when they, people are allowed to have some bad days, you know, we're not always going to be at our best. So that would not make a person toxic. When someone is considered a toxic family member is a person, a family member who does things that can harm you, whether it's physical harm whether it's um, mental, emotional, and they set you up, like where they can put you in danger. They do things that can separate friendships and families. They do things to try to f drive a wedge between you and someone else, or they go behind your back and do things that could be destructive or disclose things about you to other people that can be destructive. Toxic family member is a person who they forget that you're blood and you're related and they will, when they're angry, they become malicious. You understand? That's the difference. You may be angry with your family, right? But you're not thinking to be vindictive and to do something malicious. Like if you know they need something, you're going to always give this example, uh, Let's say normally you'll pick up a delivery for them at a certain time. If you are this way or you have a family member, let's say every Wednesday they will go and pick up something for you. And because you have a disagreement, they don't go and pick it up. That is what you will call malicious. They're vindictive. When they are angry, they are vindictive. They will do things that will hurt and harm you. They become blinded by their rage and by their feelings of contentious and um, they'll do things to set you up. Toxic family members will, they befriend your enemies. They, you will find that they're always finding some sort of unity with individuals who have hurt you and harmed you and they will try to make you feel like you're being silly for expecting them to be on your side. I understand that if we're done wrong things, we should not be childish and expect our family member oh don't talk to them because I'm mad at them da, 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 you know but sometimes there are individuals that this person has really broken your heart driven you to a point of a total meltdown breakdown or 
currently doing things and that family member will make friends with them and they will talk to them. And a lot of times what happens, you'll find that they have some things in common. When you have a family member who has, who embraces your enemies or remain in touch with people who have hurt you, who have brought you to tears, that's questionable, okay? Because sometimes you find out that that family member has, what they have in common is the fact that they, they enjoy that this person has hurt you. They enjoy that this person no longer values you, right? And sometimes, in some cases, that family member, maybe a relative or someone, you find that maybe they've always wanted the person, this individual, want to be close friends or in a relationship. And now that you're out of the picture, they can somehow put themselves in there where they're the one that's talking to them. And sometimes you have family members who they like to know that they know something you don't. So the fact that they can talk to, you know, your ex-friend or someone you were actually in a relationship with and they met with them and they talked and laughed, that brings them joy because they know that will hurt you. And they like to know that there's something that they share with this person that they can keep a secret or they could keep it themselves or hold it close to the breast and, you know, you don't know anything. They will, they like that, okay? So let's say you have, you're in a relationship with someone and you allow this family member in, maybe as an advisor or as a friend. Keep in mind, you knew this person first, but something happens down the line and all of a sudden your family member is closer to this individual than you are. Suddenly they are the voice of reason between you two. Somehow your family member will feel more obligated to keep privacy between themselves and this person and you're like on the outside they don't want to share things with you because they don't want you to be heard or or they don't think it's they should tell you certain things but how did this happen when did you become the go-between a lot of times you find that that family member has some other things going on whether they were attracted to that man or woman or it may not be anything like that but simply this person has hurt you. This person has dumped you. This friend has have said some really bad things about you. And now they're drawn to that. The commonality is this person's fallen out with you. So now they can actually, uh, they have that in common. You're hurt, you're pain, not thinking much of you. Okay. You also have family members who are absolutely disrespectful, right? And I, I told you that. It's kind of like they get very vindictive, they get malicious, they become hateful, they become destructive, they will say and do horrible things to you, they will say and do horrible things towards your children, they don't have any respect for your family, like if you have your wife, husband, your children there, or your supervisor, they'll embarrass you. These are individuals that they may come to your job or come to a function and their whole thing is to shame you and to make you look bad and to bring up things about your past, if any, just maybe some silly things that you used to do when you were little. They're going to bring that up to embarrass you. You're going to know the difference when they just don't care. All right. When you look at them, and you're like, are we related or not? So you have to first understand the difference between family members where you, they may think differently, they may have a disagreement with you, but they will never do anything to hurt, harm, embarrass, take away from you, put you down, and set you up. And when you have family members that will do something like that to you, you have a lot of decisions to make. If you're an empath, and simply that means that you really think a lot about your family, you think a lot about the other individuals, you are more than likely going to remain there because you're thinking this is my family member, but you're going to find that they don't see you that way. They will easily do a lot of things to you that no family member should do to someone else. And when they do these things, they're always going to want you to remember that they're your family if the tables are turned. They want you to remember, they want you to hold fast to that but they themselves can easily throw that out the window to hurt you or to harm you you have family members who 
will you hire them and they will destroy your business they will destroy your connections they will destroy your relationship your marriage they will turn your children against you they will figure out sniff out who your enemies are or people that don't like you and they're going to discount you and do certain things to bring you down you may be in a high position you're being esteemed you are being recognized for your achievement this family member is going to be the one to cut you down it may show up to your promotion drunk or moody yell and scream at you say something really off color to shame you and to bring you down and you have to make decisions on what you want to do especially when you have a family let me tell you why it's imperative that you have to sometimes make that cut when you have a family because that toxicity has gone from generation to generation and they've abused you and done different things to you and what they'll try to do is infiltrate your lineage with that same toxicity whether it's by whether they're doing it directly to your children or wife or they are embarrassing and bringing you down so much that your family will witness these things and your children can become frustrated when they see you are being bullied or embarrassed in front of maybe their cousins and other individuals and you're not saying anything and sometimes that can cause some things to trickle down right because then if there if 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 you have an uncle i'm sorry if you have a brother or sister that's talking to you in a disrespectful way and saying things to you and they have children well maybe you know the cousins of your children will feel like they can speak to your children in any manner because you don't defend yourself and then you may not even defend your children because you are so afraid of your older brothers or sister or younger or the more favored one that you are not protecting them. So there's just definitely a lot of things to think about. When you have a family member that's vindictive and spiteful and will do things and try to throw your business out there and do wrong things to you, you do not have to be in a position to be thinking, oh, this is my family because they're not behaving like family. And a lot of times they will make you or try to cause you to doubt yourself. But if you really think about it, if this is your family, you've had probably decades of experience with them from a young, young age. They've been doing these things. A decade is 10 years. You may have a decade, two or three decades that they've been doing things and they're not changing and they're not they're not changing their ways. Why? Because they're being enabled. The family has just said, hey, this is how it is. They know you're going to come around again. They know the drill. You're going to apologize first. Or they're going to apologize to you to do it again. You also have that toxic family member that would apologize and cry and do all these things. But they will continue to do the same things over and over again. You may have a family member that they... They call you when they need you. And when they call you, they are like blowing up your phone, right? You need to pick up right now. And if you don't pick up right now, they're going to send in the drones and send in the bots and send in the flying monkeys. Oh, where are you? Ah, right? And as soon as they get what they need from you, they disappear again. But when they need you, they're going to send out the alarm again. So you may be in this cash 22 and it is okay for you to set boundaries for your life. It's important. It's it's okay for you to say no more. And it's not that you're a bad person, especially when you have children, because you need to set a precedence for your children. You cannot afford that same toxicity to be, you know, trickling down into your family where you are so tense and you're trying so hard to make sure that your family member feels comfortable and they feel okay and they're not, they don't embarrass you. When you feel that way and you know, maybe when they get to drinking or whatever it may be, you know that you need to calm, you need to shrink yourself down or you, you, you need to ignore certain things. You should allow them to talk rude to you because if you say something back, it's going to be a problem. So when you find that you're in survival mode with these individuals, you have to set peace for yourself. You see, because maybe if it's your mom, your dad, your siblings, they're adults now. 
they're choosing to do certain things. That is what they chose, but you're the adult. You can't put it on them to change. It's up to you to decide and to make decisions for yourself and for your family. How do you go about it? If they're vindictive and malicious, cut them off because they're going to destroy you. They'll destroy your house. They'll destroy your family. If it's just a matter of, you know, sometimes you don't agree on things, but they still have a mutual respect for you, then of course, you know, certain topics to avoid with them, but you guys can still gel. You can still do things as a family and they can put everything on the back burner and just agree to disagree, but still maintain that respect. People who are vicious, people who play mind games with you, uh, the silent treatment, they stonewall you. When you upset them, they don't talk to you, they make you suffer, and then you just have to, the only way you're going to survive is to either give in or in the future, don't say anything. But then they will continue to do things, and because there's some family members, they're not really... They're not really outwardly aggressive, but they are coverts, okay? And they are implosive. You know, there's people that's explosive and they show, but they're implosive. And what they will do is they will stonewall you. They won't talk to you. They get silent on you. And they punish you that way, okay? And this can go on for days, weeks, months. They want you to get it so that the next time something happens, you will keep your mouth shut. You will not give your opinion if you want to maintain. If they say something, you better shut your mouth because if you give an honest opinion or you disagree, you don't know when they're going to talk to you again. That is mental and emotional abuse, okay? And they are hard to pick up on because they don't tell you anything. You can feel things and when you're trying to talk to them about it, they'll act like they don't know what you're talking about. So even in these situations, guys, you have to understand that what is happening to you is real. And more than likely, when it comes to family, they've been doing it. You have lived with them long enough. You have a few decades on your belt of them behaving this way that it's not, it's not you. And we also live in a society that will make you feel like, hey, you're supposed to tolerate that, that's your family. But no, family needs to be held at a higher standard. Your family, you don't betray. You're not spiteful. You don't go behind my back and do things. Yes, we may have some bumps in the road and things that we have done coming up when we were kids or younger, and we have to work out those things together. We may scuffle. We may have some issues, but we're always trying to get better. But when you have an adult or when you have a parent that is being malicious and vindictive and keeping you in this place of fear or you don't want to upset them or you, you're willing to do anything to maintain the relationship and they're not, that's not good. And that's when you can say, no, I have to do something better for myself. And sometimes you may feel lonely, especially if you have a big family and you're used to getting together. But what you're going to find is you may miss them, but you have more peace. That's the question you ask yourself. Do you have more peace? Are your Sundays more peaceful? Maybe you had to go to the, the main house for family dinner or Sunday dinners or things that you used to do or the family vacation every year that was just a stressor. You no longer have to do that, right? So just think about it, guys, and just make your decision. Every family is different. Everyone is not the same. And it's not toxic for someone to be honest with you but a lot of, you know, there's a difference between that and when someone is just trying to hurt you. When they continue to do things that they know bothers you. When they're looking for those sensitive areas in your life. You know, your our family knows. We know where the bones are buried, right? We know a lot of things about one another. We know the embarrassing moments. When they bring those things up to you and they're just being malicious. I'm sorry, they're being malicious and vilifying you and embarrassing you and you know, they'll break things and sabotage things and try to mess up your business and try to mess up your relationships. That person simply shares your DNA and they happen to have your last name. But that is your enemy, not your family. Those are the toughest decisions that you will have to make. But you're not responsible for how people behave. You're only responsible for yourself and for what you want to do for your family moving forward. 
And the thing that you have to understand, especially with parents and certain behaviors, they were doing that before you were born. Your parents has probably been doing those things for a good forever. They have multiple decades of doing, depending on their age, they've been that way. It's not your job to try to change a parent. They know better, but sometimes parents only see their children as like things. You know, like I would say like farm hands or something. You know, I created you, you're like a gnome in the yard. Go out there gnome and do what I say. They don't see you as a person. And sometimes parents will have a God mentality of I brought you in this world and I created you and so I can do whatever I want to do. But that is not it. When they gave birth to you, you have your own destiny. You have your own path. You have your own things that you would want to do. And you want to be able to have the family support and all of that. But sometimes things happen to family members and they never work through it. And so now they have children or they're in certain positions or they have siblings and all they do is they practice displacement and they continue to hurt other people and they break people down. And because you're family, you're more tolerant to it. You're going to forgive them over and over again or you're going to think there's nothing you can do. You're powerless. They're the ones that's paying the bills. They're the popular one or whatever it may be. They, you're afraid they'll beat you up. So they will continue to do those things. But if you don't put a stop to it, now that you're adults, now they're going to start in your life, in your family, in your children. And when you find that you have a family member that will do something to hurt and harm you, when you find that they would risk, they will hurt your children in some way, whether it's directly or indirectly. When they can cut off your children or they can do vindictive things to your children or to your wife, guys, now the issue is you if you allow that to happen because it is your responsibility to take care of your children and to protect your children and your household. If you are a fearful person and you have family members that's bullying you and then now they're bullying your wife or your husband and your children, you can't blame your family anymore. You have to blame yourself because you are not protecting them. You see? So it can go from generation to generation to generation, but it needs to stop somewhere. Perhaps there is a sad story behind why the family member or the parent behaved this way, but they have to work that out. And it's not fair for you to be put that way to be put on you. And you need to understand that they went through some horrible things, but they're not willing to do the work that is required to get better and to heal the relationship. It's not only on one person to heal a relationship. It's not on you to heal that relationship. And so you may find yourself being in that position and trying to figure out what to do. And I would say you definitely need to get the healing, get the counseling, lots of free material online that you can look at, lots of stuff on YouTube that can help you. And then you also want to just be in a place where you can... Um, be better. You can be better. You can do different. And sometimes that's going to require you to step away or limit access. And when you limit access, if you see that they're still trying things and they're still being disrespectful and they're carrying on and they're testing you, you know how perhaps siblings and loved ones can do. They know how to get to you. When that happens, you can get up Get your family, or if you don't have family, get up and go to your car and leave. If you're in a situation where you feel like you really can't do that at the moment because you have a volatile family member, then you figure out the best time. When they're not paying attention, you get in your car and you get out of there and learn your lessons. And don't go back for a while. You have the right to live in peace. You have the right to make your own choices and decisions. And you have to be able to understand that when it comes to family, when it comes to sharing the last name and sharing blood, they need to act like it. And when they're not acting like it, then they're just carriers of DNA and just carriers of the last name. And you need to be able to know the difference and protect yourself and protect your family or even your lineage later on down the line. I hope this makes sense. Bye, guys.